My name is Jeff Stroop. I'm a tool and die shop manager for DNM Holding. DNM is a ammunition equipment manufacturer. So what we do is we sell equipment that makes ammunition, whether it's a shell casing or projectile, to customers around the world. I've been connected with Hans and Phillips now for 33 years, whenever for DNM Holding. We decided to start setting up an actual brick and mortar building. They contacted me to build the shop. So we had nothing in the building, it was an empty building. We started out from scratch. Well, the biggest challenge since we were setting up a new shop was to try to figure out what all parts we needed and what pieces of equipment we needed to make a variety of parts without getting equipment that wasn't gonna be running. We've got a UMC 750, we've got a VF3 SS, we've got a VF2 SS. We have three DS30 wide lathes. We have an ST10 lathe, and we also have a VS7. We were able to identify all of the pieces of equipment that can do multiple tasks. A lot of times our DS30 lathes, we're able to do parts on that that could actually also be done on a mill. The machines are doing multiple processes for that piece of equipment. Each piece of equipment was typically paid off within a year to year and a half, depending on which piece it was and what it was creating. One thing great about Haas is where their support because I'm able to contact them when we have an issue on a part, either a program or how a part's being made or how a machine is reacting to it. And they, they provide us a lot of professional help on getting that problem solved and moving forward. When we started setting our shop up, Hunter and Carrie came by, introduced us to the printers, uh, brought a sample printer over, and we printed a couple parts, looked at it, and thought it was a, a great fit for what we were doing. My name is Hunter Cubitz, and I'm a Mark Ford sales specialist for Phillips Corporation. DNM was actually the first X7 Phillips sold in uh, Arkansas. Mostly he was looking for just uh, fixturing and work holdings for his CNC machines, as well as prototyping. We did take a look at some of the parts Jeff was thinking about printing just to make sure that the Mark Forge technology was the right fit for the applications he was seeking. The parts that Jeff was looking at ended up working perfect for the Mark Forge technology. So on the first parts we printed were some waterfalls for one of our packaging machines. We identified that as our first part because of the amount of machine work that was needed done and the cost between the material and machine time. When we started printing them, we found out that the payoff on the machine basically was within the first 30 to 45 days. Once we printed the first set of parts and it paid for the machine almost instantly. With the printer, we do a lot of prototyping. We'll print up a part to test out our theory and design. And then we also print a lot of use parts for feed tube adapters and different products that we actually put on some of our equipment. For the most part, he does most of his applications with just the onyx base material, which is a nylon six with micro bits of chopped carbon fiber inside of it. Then he also has the capability with this printer to also reinforce the parts with full strands of reinforcement materials, such as carbon fiber. Mark Force printer has, has exceeded our expectations for several reasons. Your product, cost, your print time. The strength of the material, it has surprised us. It's a, once you print, even, even without an additive, like a fiber additive in with it, just the onyx itself is a lot stronger than what we originally anticipated. So it holds up a lot better than we originally thought it was going to. When we realized that we needed a printer, I looked at several different printers and even with what I've seen, this was definitely the one we wanted. The service has been great on it. All I do is pick up the phone and they usually answer the question right then or call me right back with it. If I have an issue with a file, I can email it to them. They can check everything out, make sure the file's good, and then we print it. We use it a lot on the machine vice jaws for like a secondary operation. If you're machining a part, you need a way to hold it, and there's not a real good way to hold it. One example is this part here. In order to hold this part, I actually printed some jaws that were able to hold the part in the vise so we can do secondary op machining on it. One thing we didn't think about on the printer when we were doing it was as much prototyping as it's able to do. We're able to do larger parts and then piece those pieces together for a larger prototype part or a lot of our continuous parts that we do. If we start running short on them, we can print a part out and get it out on the floor faster. And we do a first piece test. We print up our first part, test everything, look at it, and then we'll actually start machining parts. 
so it works good for prototyping. All of these parts right here are production parts. These right here are feed tube adapters, so this is a tube that comes in, drops the part through, and it adapts it to a larger size. That's what each one of these adapters are. There's about six different sizes of the feed tube adapters. These are for clip rings. We have a vacuum set up on this side of the part. This will pull off the clip ring on the production machine when it clips the top of the casing. It'll suck it through here and blow it into a bucket. That's what both of these parts are. This part right here is a oil catch tube. This is a, an oddball thread that's on a bottle, on a little plastic bottle. So we made the thread and you screw that in here and this is just a pipe thread that screws into the bottom of the machine so it catch any, catches any residual oil from the machine. Instead of it dripping on the floor, it drips into a nice container instead of making a mess. This is a part catcher for the bottom of an anvil die set. So this goes on the die set and each anvil will drop through the holes here and there's a vacuum on each tube. And then also there's an air assist right here. So there's a nut that's printed into the part. We pause the print, place the nut in there, and then we screw, screw an air line onto it that pushes air down through these to assist the vacuum. The biggest thing with Phillips is the professionalism. Your support, your sales, everything is very professional. You pick up a phone, you call them, and it doesn't matter what time, day or night, I get an answer. They help me out. They don't worry if it's a weekend. 